Hi, I'm Charmaine Martinez. Um, it's a real honor to be speaking at TypeCon today, and I teach graphic design and typography at Cal Poly down in San Luis Obispo, California. And today I'll be talking about a project that I developed about five years ago. Um, and I was looking for a way to have students work together um, so that they would understand typesetting, book design, and how much typography can affect the reading experience. And I found that students really struggle when they start working with um, longer bits of type. So um, just to give you some context, at Cal Poly we have a three course uh, series in typography. And I have found that this course works particularly well um, about halfway through the curriculum of type. Um, so the students already have some basic understanding of the rules of typography. They're beginning to develop that sensitivity toward type. At the same time, they're still learning to deal with those longer blocks of text, and they tend to be really intimidated by projects that require more text than a poster. Um, and since we're on the quarter system, things move pretty quickly. So we spend um, about three weeks building up to this project with two shorter projects, um, a lot of reading from Butterick's Practical Typography. And then I have the students um, dive right into creating a small print booklet. They have a week to design and produce it. Okay. And so I chose the text uh, for this project for several reasons. Um, I was really familiar with it thanks to um, a high school English teacher who was a disciple of the elements of style. And the book is divided into shorter sections which makes it easy um, to break up for a team project. And the content is it's particularly rich. Um, there are multiple levels of information. It forces students to think about hierarchy and clarity when they're designing the text. Um, and the other thing is in my design classes, I always try to stress the importance of good writing skills. Um, and this book is actually a really nice, short and sweet reference guide uh, for how to become a better writer. And I hope through doing the project that students actually retain some of the information from the book. I, I don't know if they do, but they've at least read it more than once. Um, so the way that the project works is uh, each student is, is assigned either section one, section two, or sections three and four. And so when I give them the text, it looks like this. It's a really messy Microsoft Word document. All of the examples are in these, um, you know, these pretty hideous tables. Um, and I tell them, you know, they can do whatever they want um, as long as the end goal is to, um, you know, make the text as clear and legible as possible. They don't need to keep those, um, those tables. So there are several challenges that students face um, when they start this project. Uh, because it's a print book, there are a lot of details, uh, the content is pretty complex, and the turnaround time is, is really tight. And uh, I like to do a mix of print and digital projects in my type classes, um, and so in this case, creating a simple bound book really forces the students to experiment with pacing and white space and margins in a way that they might not if it was uh, designed for the screen. Um, they have to make sure that the number of pages is divisible by four. That's a challenge in and of itself, and they don't always succeed in working that out um, in the first round. Um, as I mentioned, they really have to read the text. Um, you know, if they're used to working with placeholder text at the beginning of a project and viewing that type as just a rectangle, they can't really do that in this case. So they really need to understand what's going on with the content in order to come up with an effective design. So some of the things that I'm hoping the students will get out of this project are um, just a better understanding of the grid. Even if it's just a simple manuscript grid, they still need to consider basic things like optimal line length, uh, distance of the main text from folios and footers, how each spread is going to relate to the next. And I try to keep the format itself pretty simple. The page size is five and a half by eight and a half, so the students can just use InDesign's print booklet feature to output their files. There's no trimming. They just have to fold and staple the book together. It's black ink on white paper. Um, so, you know, it's the students, I think, consider it to be a fairly dry assignment, although they, they eventually come around towards the end. Um, but I want to make sure that the assembly of the book is, um, is pretty easy and so they can really focus on the design. Um, that being said, you know, they still definitely struggle with, um, you know, trying to plan out a, a full book, even though it's a, a relatively short book. Um, the other thing that I stress to students um, in this course is the importance of understanding and applying styles in InDesign. 
So I find that many students are really resistant to setting up their documents properly, um, and I think they're just trying to work as quickly as possible um, to get their layout done. And, but I warn them that since they're going to be collaborating with one another, it's really important to um, you know, think about paragraph versus character styles and how they're going to work together and that their technical skills are really going to make or break um, the collaboration. In addition to all that technical stuff, um, the students really need to consider how the typography is going to affect the reading of the text and our comprehension. Um, as a viewer. So they need to decide what needs to be emphasized and how they can use subtle shifts in types, type style to help the reader really understand what's going on. And when I initially developed this project, I, I wanted to create a collaborative component um, in which students could work with each other, yet they were ultimately responsible for creating their own final piece. And I know that students, and I think professors as well, can really dread team projects. There are always issues of workload and fairness that come up. Um, and there's a lot of tension around that. But one thing that I've found is that if the collaboration goes well, and surprisingly it, it often does, the students really feed off each other's energy um, and ideas on this uh, in the second phase. So here's what happens when the students have their first crack at designing the books. Um, they know going into the project that uh, there are going to be two phases. And sometimes I think they treat the first round as really more of a draft than a final piece. Um, so I end up with, you know, some things that have pretty poor craftsmanship, um, like this guy that wasn't even really folded at a right angle. Um, or they don't really think about the fact that there's going to be a cover design and they end up with some, you know, a, a design that really looks like an afterthought. Um, or, you know, as I mentioned, they have problems with pagination um, and trying to figure out what goes where. So, you know, in this case, the student just decided to start the text on the inside front cover and, um, you know, and it, it ran all the way to that cover. So, or they ran out of print money. I, you know, I, I teach at a state school, I get that too. Um, uh, so, you know, in that first critique of these books, we, we talk about the craft. Um, and, you know, it's a little thing, but there should be some thought into where the, the staples are, are positioned. They shouldn't be completely random. I, I, I don't know, I love this one. It's just, um, the other thing is, uh, one of the things I've noticed when students start working with, uh, longer chunks of text, uh, they really shy away from bold type treatment. It's like, oh, it's not a poster, it's not expressive, so it's just going to be really bland. I've just got to get this design done. And um, so they don't really play with scale a lot. You know, in this case, the, uh, the footer is not much, uh, you know, smaller than the, the main text. Subhead is not much more prominent than the flowing text. So, you know, they're, they're kind of working it out, but it's, it's very utilitarian. Um, and another thing that is fairly typical in this project is because there are descriptions and then examples of maybe a rule of grammar and a, you know, a more correct example versus an incorrect example, they'll, you know, they'll try to find ways to show that. Um, but they might not think that switching, uh, you know, text weights is going to be ultimately kind of distracting, right? Or switching between different sizes uh, within the main text or going back and forth between a serif or a sans serif. You know, and these aren't really mistakes per se, but they might not be the best, um, the best solution. Um, uh, another thing that, uh, another issue that really arises in that first design round is, um, you know, just the idea of space and how important it is to give elements enough breathing room and to really think about the full composition of the page or spread. Um, those tables, they really end up coming back to haunt the student if they keep them in the flow of the text. Um, you know, they'll just leave them with a sort of default InDesign styling and you end up with these pretty clunky rectangles throughout the whole book. Um, you know, even little things like margin size or, um, you know, optimal letting, line length, um, even text size when, when the students bring them in for the first critique, even though we've already been, you know, looking at them and we've had an interim meeting, They'll be like, oh, my text is really too small, or wow, my text looks really clunky, like maybe it's for a fourth grader. Um, so they'll, you know, through comparison, they'll sort of find a sweet spot of, of type size. Um, uh, and every time I've given this project, I've had at least one student try to use strike through text throughout, throughout the book. And um, it's actually, you know, a somewhat logical way to show that something is, you know, maybe incorrect or less correct. Um, but, of course, strike-through text is not the easiest to read. 
Um, and, you know, it's also, it's not necessarily black and white. It's not maybe right or wrong. Um, it's a little bit more subtle than that. Um, and so, as I mentioned, text styling and just that technical stuff in, in InDesign, um, you know, one thing that it always surprises me is how students don't catch these things, right? Uh, letting the changes from one paragraph to the next or something that um, all of a sudden switches to a way bigger size. And I think sometimes it's a factor of time and other times they just start um, styling really late in the process and so there's a lot of manual styling going on and, and they don't catch that. Um, and then, you know, there's the little things, the nitpicky things like orphans and widows. Um, you know, that they don't catch on that first round and, you know, I, I do recognize that learning typography, it takes time and it's hard, you know, it's hard work and so I try to be really empathetic and, and patient even though these things tend to drive me crazy when they, when they make it into the final critique. Um, so after that first week, which is really kind of a boot camp of, of book design, um, we move into the collaborative phase of the project. And so I, I put students in teams of three and each team will basically, uh, with their sections, form a complete um, book. They're gonna continue to work with their original um, text. And so this time they get an additional week to work together and to create a unified series of books. Um, so we have a, a pretty quick class critique and then the teams will have a more extensive critique um, in their small groups. Uh, so the students in this class are primarily junior graphic design majors. This is their second type class. Um, and so I'm trying to shift the burden of critiquing increasingly onto the students. Um, I don't want them always to be dependent on me to tell them if something isn't working, and I really want them to develop that eye for type. And when they work in these smaller groups, I've found that they're actually, they're really constructive um, with each other, much more so than they might be in a big class critique where you've got 24, 26 students, and you know, some people are resistant to talking. So uh, the small critiques seem to work really well, and the students will spend a lot of time actually finding mistakes, marking things up, and you know, deciding what elements they want to keep in their final series. Um, what I have them do at this point is to plan out their styles. So, you know, if they didn't really do their styles the first time around, they're kind of forced into it um, during the collaborative part of the project. So they actually have to print out, um, you know, every style they're gonna use, character, paragraph styles, table styles, um, anything that's in there. And this becomes a really good indicator of how detail-oriented the teams are and, and how much they're really considering hierarchy. Um, so here's what happens uh, after the students work together as a, as a group on this. So the first thing um, that I noticed when I gave this assignment out initially was the incredible improvement that happened in terms of just craftsmanship, overall craft of, you know, not only just the physical construction of the, of the booklets themselves, but also the typography. Um, you know, and they get much more uh, creative and they have a little bit more fun with things like the title page and section dividers. Um, they pay a lot more attention, attention to the pacing of the text. Um, you know, in the first round, a lot of the students will try to stuff a pretty long introduction into, um, you know, one small page. Inevitably, a few students, you know, run it to the next page. And then it's like a light turns on. The students are like, oh, yeah, I can actually start my introduction like halfway down the page and use a big prominent subhead. Or, you know, I can do something a little bit more dramatic on those pages that have less text. Um, I can use a great big number. Um, it's almost like they're waiting for permission to do, to do this kind of thing um, and working in the group helps them take a lot more risks with the type. And again, you know, this sort of like micro risks compared to some of the experimental stuff. Um, but it's still really exciting to see that. Um, you know, and the typesetting of the main content also improves dramatically. Uh, you know, students compare sections, they try to find like similarities in the content. Um, they become a lot more engaged with the content and many of them actually admit that they were confused by some of the grammar rules, but they were, they were too embarrassed to admit it. But, you know, being, being in smaller groups, they're like, oh yeah, I didn't get that. I don't understand that. What does that mean? Um, uh, they also think about breaking up that uh, text with more prominent subheads, and once they start working with larger text, it kind of opens up the typeface options they have. Um, and then, you know, one big thing that happens is those nasty tables end up getting a makeover as they realize they can actually get in there and InDesign and they, you know, they can style it, they can remove the exterior border, uh, you know, and they can make it uh, just a lot more subtle. Uh, and then they just become more critical overall of what that type looks like. Um, the covers get more interesting. 
They even start thinking, oh, can you see that? They even start thinking about end sheets and using, you know, contrasting paper stocks to kind of indicate a break between the cover and the interior text. They find ways to relate the cover typography to the interior design of the book. So I'm just going to show you a few before and after images from the last time I gave this project. Um, here's the initial group. You can see, I mean, this, this student ended up, you know, I don't collect these on the first round and they end up putting them in their backpacks. They get all beat up. They don't love them. Um, and that turned into this series, uh, which was inspired by great novels of the 20th century. Uh, the Sun Also Rises, The Catcher in the Rye, and The Great Gatsby. And that's loosely connected to the elements of style, but I was glad they were thinking about literature. That was exciting. Um, here's the team's uh, first round. And initially, they had one that was more interesting. The student actually used a little separate flap uh, for the title, so they ended up modifying that um, and you know, creating a custom pattern uh, for the final team version. So if they have things that are working in the first round, I tell them, don't, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Use those, use those things that you like. It's fine. It's not cheating. It's how design works. Um, and this uh, group, which it was just pure coincidence that they all use red on the cover, um, it turned into this really lovely series. So even little things like the colophon, I mean, poor Monique, this is clearly an afterthought, um, that turned into this. The clunky tables, as I mentioned, usually go away or, you know, they get pushed back. Um, you know, confusion about what should be emphasized. So, you know, in this one, the incorrect or less preferred version is bold, and over here on the right-hand side, the more correct version is bold, so it's, there's a little bit of um, like, huh, what's going on with that? And that usually gets resolved as the teams, you know, again, they become um, just more aware of what the text is actually saying. Um, so what I found in giving this project is that um, having the students collaborate, it really improves their sensitivity type, their comprehension of the text, their openness to experiment with different type treatments and even materials, their ability to craft a well-made book um, with a simple binding, and their technical skills with document setup in, in InDesign. Um, and so I just want to thank you for listening today. Um, and please feel free if you want more details on the assignment um, or you just want to have a conversation about teaching typography to, to shoot me an email. Thank you.